Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and in case you did not already hear, a copy of The Flash TV show, the first episode, leaked online. So I'm not going to allow anyone to share it here in the comments or repost the link or anything like that or post spoilers, but I am going to talk about how it happened and what the CW is going to do about it. You know, hint, hint, maybe post it early on their website. The same thing happened to a bunch of Legend of Korra book three episodes last week. That was way worse because it was like four episodes instead of just one, and they weren't even the first four, which means if people watch them, they missed out on a giant chunk of the story. So hello to all the new people. If you're just finding me for the first time, I do Arrow and Flash videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Once everything starts airing in the fall, like around October, usually the first week in October, I'll just be doing weekly videos for all the episodes. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm really excited. For all those that are wondering, they're probably going to start airing Season 3 of Arrow and Season 1 of The Flash around the same time Arrow Season 2 started last year, which was the first week in October. So WTF is up with the leak. Well, whenever networks have brand new shows that they want critics to talk about, they want to create like a real positive buzz, they send out DVD screeners. They usually have watermarks on them with some disclosure language about not reselling or posting them anywhere. They're not meant for the public. The CW has been sending out screeners of this first episode of The Flash, so that is what leaked online, one of these DVD screeners. It was either posted by someone who had a screener or someone stole it off of someone else's desk and then posted that. I actually work for a couple of big news organizations in real life. I know everyone always asks what I do in real life. I actually do a lot of YouTube stuff for big company trade websites, so we get piles and piles of screeners for everything you've ever heard of and tons of stuff that you would never ever want to see. So whenever you're mailing out thousands and thousands of copies of DVDs, it's not hard to understand why someone would steal one of those and upload it to the internet. The other possibility is that the CW intentionally leaked the episode. Networks have done that in the past as a way to drive interest in something. It usually only works whenever it's like a comic book thing or associated with a major fandom. Like if a copy of Star Wars Episode 7 leaked early, all of creation would just flip. The CW isn't really known for leaking their own material as a way to generate viral interest, and since the Flash TV show already has a ton of really good buzz, I don't think that they would need to do that anyway. So I think that my first theory is the right one. Someone stole a copy of the screener and uploaded it to the internet. So what is the CW going to do about it? Well, typically networks, whenever stuff like this happens, to defuse the situation will just post that episode, whatever leaked, online on their website. Whenever those Korra episodes leaked though, Nickelodeon decided to start airing all the episodes on television months in advance of their original release date. Because it was only the first episode of The Flash to leak and the CW just did Upfronts, they're probably not going to start airing the episodes early. Upfronts is typically where networks make arrangements with advertisers for them to buy advertising at a certain time and place like on the episodes of a television show. So that's all been scheduled far, far in advance. So if the CW aired The Flash early, they would be losing millions and millions of dollars in advertising. So everyone's still going to have to wait till October for the season to start officially. But they still could totally post that full episode on their website and just stream it for free as a way to control the situation. So originally they were just going to air the episode at Comic-Con and then maybe post it online like a week after that. So they were going to post it online eventually. If you were one of the people who watched it, please use spoiler tags whenever you're talking about it in the comments. But if you've already read any of the Flash origin stories, you already know what the story is, even though they never do things exactly like they do in the comics. Arrow, for instance, changes a lot of character backstories and has created a lot of new original characters like Diggle. But if you do want to read a story that's very close to the story they're going to be telling on the Flash TV show, you should read Flash Rebirth. It was written by Jeff Johns, one of the writers of the Flash TV show. There are a lot of small differences, but thematically it's the same idea. Jeff Johns has actually been one of my favorite DC Comics writers in the last 20 years. Oh, and he's also executive producer on the Batman vs Superman movie. Right now he's actually writing the new Superman comic that's being drawn by John Romita Jr. He's the guy that did Kick-Ass, which is why it looks very similar. A very kick-ass version of Superman. If you want to learn more about their version of it, I'm going to be posting a link in the description to this big New York Times article about it. But now let's talk about some other new Flash footage because the CW has been posting a ton of interviews and a ton of additive, like extra material about the universe the Flash is in. Like what's going to be going on with Star Labs and all the metahumans that were created whenever the particle accelerator exploded. You know, aka the rogues. I've actually been talking a lot about this in my Arrow videos this year, so if you're like a brand new subscriber and you just found me and you haven't seen any of my Arrow stuff, please let me know. I'll actually be adding a link in the description. I made like a ton of Arrow videos this year. It was a lot of fun. The summer is actually one of the best times to catch up on Arrow, so you have a couple months before Season 3 starts. Even though there are two different groups of people making these shows, they will exist in a shared universe. We even saw Stephen Amell in the Flash trailer, so watching both these shows will increase your enjoyment. The fun thing about The Flash that's different from Arrow is that they're going full on with the superpowers. 
If you've seen the trailer, you know that Weather Wizard is the first rogue we meet. I don't really count Zoom as a rogue. They're definitely not trying to hide him either. Zoom, or Professor Zoom, or however you want to think about him, has been such a huge part of the Flash stories for such a long time that there would be no point in trying to hide him anyway. Even though Edward Thawn is working at the same police station as Barry, they're not really saying he's Zoom. So he will be present at all times, like an overarching story, while week to week Barry treks down rogues and other metahumans. But they're not officially going to confirm him probably till the end of the season. So one of the other big changes they made is the Harrison Wells character. In the canon, the founder of Star Labs is named Garrison Slate. That character is featured in a lot of Blue Beetle comics. And because Arrow's introducing Blue Beetle this year, we might get to see some Star Labs Cord Industries overlap. Blue Beetle hasn't officially been confirmed by the CW, but they did put out a casting call for Season 3 using the Golden Age name of the Blue Beetle. So it's a bit of a dead giveaway. Whenever Arrow does bring him on, just like Barry Allen, I'd expect the Ted Cord character to be like pre-Blue Beetle. Or it'll be like Batman Year One, where he's still figuring things out. So there's a really big Easter egg that people are talking about in relation to the Flash pilot, but it's kind of spoilery, so just skip forward in the video like 25 seconds if you don't want to know anything about it. Everybody ready? So here we go. It's all about Gorilla Grodd. It sounds like the Flash is going to do a Planet of the Apes situation whereby Gorilla Grodd attains his super intelligence through the same dimensional rift that was caused by the particle accelerator. I don't expect him to come on the show anytime soon, but don't be surprised if you see more references to him. Aside from Zoom and the Rogues, Gorilla Grodd is like one of the most infamous Flash villains, which is kind of funny because Rise of the Planet of the Apes is coming out really soon. So because of VCon this week, my schedule is a little weird, but I'm still going to try and post a bonus air video before I go. So I'm also doing that special personal Q&A, so feel free to ask me any personal questions you want in addition to Arrow and Flash stuff. And remember, if you have seen that leaked Flash footage, please use spoiler tags if you're going to comment about it. But right now, click here to learn all about Blue Beetle and the other Batman characters that are coming to Arrow Season 3. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. And click here to get my breakdown of the Flash trailer. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.